The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirk presiding. Calling case 2021-1378 DM Alyssa Pessor versus Jordan Pessor. Today is Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 8.59 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Thomas on behalf of the plaintiff, Ms. Henderson on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to reinstate parenting time, uh, Ms. Henderson. Good morning, Your Honor. Thank you. On January 23, this court held a hearing on plaintiff's motion to suspend parenting time. At that point, I was not yet retained by Mr. Basor, and unfortunately, he did not appear to the hearing, uh, having received the notice of that hearing just uh, Thursday the week before and not being able to retain counsel. The court did suspend his parenting time. That was the only ruling of the court, and the court stated it would um, entertain motions to reinstate parenting time. Um, immediately upon being retained, which was approximately 4.58 p.m. on January 23rd, the day after, the, the day of the hearing, but after the hearing occurred, uh, defendant's counsel emailed plaintiff's counsel asking if a resolution would be possible. I would ask the court to note that um, Plaintiff's counsel provides a, an untruthful statement in her response stating that I contacted her prior to the hearing, which is completely false. I did not even meet with Mr. Basor until approximately 3.30 p.m. on the day of the hearing, Your Honor. So I would ask the court to note that and see what other things are untruthful in that response provided by plaintiff's counsel. Upon speaking with plaintiff's counsel, it was determined that even though there are no formal rulings made or conditions for reinstatement of parenting time that my client would undergo an independent psychological evaluation. And immediately upon um, having agreed on that, my client reached out to Life Coach Psychology, which is located in two um, <clears throat> offices. One of them is about 15 minutes away from my client's uh, residence and his place of employment in Berrien Springs. He resides in Niles. And so my client um, scheduled his independent psychological evaluation through my participation on the NA um, case rotation. I know that Dr. Haugen was at that time booking well into spring. And so uh, uh, Life Coach has been used by this court more often recently because Dr. Haugen is so busy. My client attended the independent psychological evaluation on February 14 and March 2nd and completed a comprehensive evaluation, the result of which was provided to the defense, to plaintiff's counsel on March 8, 2023. A copy of this evaluation is attached to the motion. I understand that um, plaintiff's counsel is stating it's hearsay. However, um, I do have uh, concerns about the court granting the motion based on completely hearsay allegations that were contained in that motion, Your Honor. And <clears throat> had my client appeared, I don't know if the court would have made that ruling. Um, the results of the evaluation verbatim state that there is no evidence that Jordan Basor is an angry and aggressive person, and there is no indication from the evaluation that this would point him to being an unsafe parent. The traits that were revealed in the test have no bearing on the quality of his parenting of his children, Your Honor. There were no specific recommendations made um, based on nothing essentially um, harmful in his behavior or traits found as relates to parenting. However, Mr. Basor re-engaged in weekly counseling through Life Coach Psychology that he has been attending at this point every week after work. During that counseling, Your Honor, he is um, working on healthy relationships. He is working on issues of substance abuse, uh, any other issues that were um, mentioned in the independent psychological eval evaluation, such as anxiety, insecurity, and difficulty with socialization. And at this point, um, defendant has done what was communicated with plaintiff's counsel 
uh, he's willing to provide any and all releases necessary for Ms. Thomas to review his progress. He is um, willing to continue and plans to continue that counseling on a weekly basis. Uh, Your Honor, we're asking that his parenting time be reinstated. Any of our requests resulted in very brief video parenting time, mostly with his daughter, Mia. However, I do have to say that after the filing of the motion, a plaintiff allowed the, the son to call my client, Brody, and Brody acted like nothing happened, told his daddy missed him. So clearly the allegations of him being afraid or not wanting to have any contact with my client do not um, check out at this point, Your Honor. We're asking that my client be uh, granted his parenting time that he has pursuant to the judgment of divorce. Uh, he has spring break this year with the children. He would like to exercise this parenting time. He is willing to have his mother supervised it if that makes um, plaintiff more comfortable. He is going to continue mental health treatment, Your Honor, at this point. He is willing to do whatever the court needs him to do to get his children back. However, I think he has shown uh, through his participation in the evaluation and counseling already that he is um, acting upon his um, desire to see his children again. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You. Ms. Thomas, uh, what's your response and uh, address, if you would, if there's any your client's agreeable if, in fact, the uh, paternal grandmother does supervise. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, first of all, I would apologize that I noticed that our response had the former counsel as opposed to Ms. Henderson on it. I do take exception to Ms. Henderson's comments this morning regarding um, what time of the day we spoke on that Monday. Um, in that I leave at 4 p.m. on Monday, every Monday, so that's not correct. So I'm not sure what that's about, but whatever. Um, although um, counsel alleges that um, the order of this court was based upon false allegations, defendant did nothing to let this court know um, and or otherwise, um, you know, acknowledge that he was even aware of what was going on. He obviously, um, now we know he did have notice, he had proper notice. Um, he failed and refused to attend the January 23rd, 2023 hearing, even though he knew it was about having his parenting time suspended, he still did not attend. And that's interesting because um, it's not as though he didn't know how to ask for an adjournment because, in fact, he had asked for an adjournment in the enforcement um, portion of this case. So he did know how to ask. He just didn't. Um, since immediately prior to the entry of the judgment of divorce, the defendant has repeatedly alleged plaintiff is lying to the court, but is yet to offer any evidence of same. And in fact, failed to file an answer to this or otherwise respond to this present motion. Um, there still is not a response to this motion in the court file, um, allowing this court to believe that the allegations um, that were made um, by plaintiff are in fact truthful. Um, um, and, and that did support a suspension of parenting time. The suspension of parenting time was not about plaintiff attempting to interfere in defendant's relationship with the minor children. Rather, it was based upon the party's son, his unusual response to the parenting time that happened at defendant's home over New Year's weekend when he cried and begged to not have to go back to his dad's home and begged to talk to your honor personally, explaining to you why he shouldn't have to do that. Um, after he had previously always, always looked forward to going to dad's house. He'd always wanted to go. He'd always look forward to going. He knew that there's there's limited rules and, and he wanted that. Um, that combined with the defendant's history of mental health issues, his violation of the plaintiff's personal protection order against him, and then plaintiff becoming aware that there was domestic violence at plaintiff's home. And apparently that weekend, not in front of the children, but apparently it wasn't the first time of domestic violence in defendant's home. And therefore, um, in that time, our plaintiff's understanding is that the um, plaintiff's then girlfriend ended up with broken ribs. So clearly there's a lot more than what counsel would have this court believe. Um, after conferring actually with the defendant's mother, that's when, in fact, plaintiff decided that, you know, she that the parenting, the parenting weekend was missed. And and based upon the totality of all of that, she decided that that this was the absolute only way to go at this point. 
Although there was an agreement that a psychological evaluation should occur, defendant at the apparent discretion of or direction of his counsel selected his own evaluator, wherein as we had requested Dr. Haugen. I note that um, <clears throat> Henderson um, did indicate this morning that Dr. Haugen is gone apparently until spring, but that's not true. Um, I have talked to Dr. Haugen numerous times over the past three weeks, so definitely that's not the case. He he's in fact is I could have gotten him in that same week. Um, I just didn't know until after um, the um, it, that was the day of the appointment that I found out. So obviously it was too late. Um, the purpose of the evaluation was to determine the presence of anger and or aggressive issues and was to be inclusive of an alcohol and drug assessment, which has not yet been completed. Um, the defendant has a history of mental health issues, which led to the inclusion of language in the judgment of divorce that defendant shall follow all recommendations referrals from his current health care provider regarding mental health treatment. He has failed to comply with um, that directive. Um, more importantly, the party's minor son has experienced some, signif some significant trauma at the thought of having to go to in-person contact with defendant. He's working with the resilience coach at his school, which is a Mr. Trauma Day. And he's helping him kind of um, with his emotions, but also helping him with skills to um, kind of help when when Brody's frustrated. Um, both children are scheduled um, for counseling evaluations um, to determine their needs, even though there is no order for plaintiff to do so. She has, in fact, been allowing um, telephone and video um, chat contact with the defendant. Um, the older minor child um, is still extremely upset um, and refused to have any contact for uh, for several sessions. Um, he then has agreed to do one. Um, he was okay. Again, that was um, with the help and, and guidance of the resilience coach from his school. Um, defendant was given the younger minor child's soccer schedule, um, inviting him to games, and he failed to, to go to any of her games. Um, similar to the way he fails to exercise his Wednesday evening parenting time. Um, once the children have been evaluated, there can be a better directive as to the children's best interests and what is best for them. Um, meanwhile, defendant has failed to comply with the judgment of divorce and did not undergo drug and alcohol assessment as counsel had agreed. Finally, plaintiff objects to the inclusion of defendant's exhibit, obviously, as it includes double hearsay and cites not only an incorrect reason for the evaluation, and lays the evaluation for the purposes of a custody. In other words, the that that the evaluation was done because there's a custody battle, which isn't true, and unknown whether true or not. Plaintiff was unaware um, that an evaluation kept the defendant out of jail for the personal protection order. That's what it says in the evaluation itself. That it, the the evaluator gives credence to defendant's actions, and he gives she gives credence to his actions based upon him having lost custody of his children and wanting his children back. But what the court needs to realize, it wasn't that he lost his children's um, parenting time and then had these actions. These actions are the reason that he lost parenting time with his children. And again, it, we we just want the children to be safe and what's in their best interest. Um, we, based upon the inaccuracies, the results cannot really be um, for the purpose of the test and the reason for the test and what it's about. I don't think that they even res the results can even be given credibility. Um, we do know that um, this morning counsel has indicated that um, he has no anger issues and, and that we should go back to the way it was. But as recently as Saturday of this weekend, um, the um, defendant sent an, a text, um, mistakenly apparently, but still said a text that says, quote, I'm going to tell this lawyer off. She's telling me I have court at nine Monday. Then another, then also a text saying, apologizing to his daughter and saying that um, he is just trying so hard to get you back and I just can't win. I worked 24, five days straight and I'm just mentally exhausted. I'm so sorry, honey. I just want you back. But mom doesn't want that. Again, a violation of the minor child's inalienable rights, a, an attempt to get the child to be angry with mom because that she can't see dad and interfering in that relationship. So clearly there are still ongoing issues. We're asking at this point that, and, and I'm cognizant of the fact that um, um, counsel has, has indicated that, that grandma is willing to step up. We would be okay 
with supervised parenting time with grandma, we have a really hard time with the idea that after dad has gone for a long time now, um, without having the kids with him, that it would be for an extended nine day period. So if we could somehow work that out and either trade spring breaks or, or something along those lines, that would be better. Um, we're also asking that this court require a defendant to comply with the mental health treatment as set forth in the judgment of divorce and comport with the party's agreement regarding drug and alcohol assessment with the defendant required to undergo any recommended treatment as a result thereof. It appears from the police reports that um, alcohol may have been involved in the, um, um, what transpired between defendant and his girlfriend over the um, New Year's weekend. Um, we're asking that the children be evaluated rec with recommendations for any treatment as it may relate to any kind of trauma um, from being in dad's care and improving their relationship with the defendant. The defendant be required to participate in any recommended therapy with the minor children as may be requested by their therapist. Um, we're asking that the court require defendant to undergo the healthy relation that um, plaintiff was told as part of the PPO case that defendant is to undergo a healthy relationships course and that was supposed to occur in resulting from the um, personal protection order. There's no, in the violation thereof, actually, um, there is no indicator that that's happened, although that was part of the agreement and, and that was made with the plaintiff in that case. Um, so at this point, um, based upon the fear and all the other things with regard to, to his regular parenting time being supervised, um, the the um, plaintiff is okay with that as long as it's supervised by grandma, meaning his mother, um, defendant's mother. Um, but with the domestic violence and other things, we just, with no supervision, parenting time is is not in their best interest until we find out what's going on with them. What is the reason for this happening? Because it was a, it was a 180 turnaround for the minor child, the older minor child. And and let's let's look not at the defendant getting or not getting his parenting time. Let's look at these children and find out what's going on, why the big change, what's going on. It's an exact opposite of what had been happening prior to that and look at their best interests and their needs. So at this point, I would ask that the court not allow extended parenting time unless, I mean, if grandma's able to supervise the entire time, that's fine, but we would need to verify that first. Otherwise, if it's just the... Um, <clears throat> alternate week parenting time, having grandma supervised is fine with the plaintiff. Um, uh, the defendant has not been exercising Wednesdays anyway, and I believe he has to let her know if he plans to in advance anyway. So I don't know that that's such a problem because again, grandma could contact her and let her know. But at this point, to, to go back to the unsupervised schedule. And so Thomas, know, please so wrap this up. I don't have all morning for this, okay? That's fine. Yep, that's fine. So to go back to the um, unsupervised um, um, parenting time without finding out first what's going on with the children and with their best interest is not is not good. It's not a right decision in this case. Okay, thank you. Well, in this matter, as uh, Ms. Henderson stated, uh, you know, that she didn't know if the uh, court would have granted the motion had the defendant appeared. But the fact is the defendant did not appear. And uh, obviously he was well, he was aware of it. He could have appeared, could have requested an adjournment or any number of other things he could have done. He didn't do. And there's consequences for not appearing in court. Uh, the court will not grant the motion to reinstate at this time, in, except in so far as the court will grant the defendant parenting time that is supervised by the paternal grandmother. And uh, the provisions are such that the grandmother has to be present at all times during the parenting time. So if she's not able to do so, then he wouldn't get that uh, particular parenting time. Court will do that. The court will uh, order that the uh, children would continue in counseling and the parties would uh, participate as recommended by the counselor. Court would order that the uh, defendant would participate in a healthy relationship course, and further that he would comply with all the provisions related to the judgment of divorce. And uh, court will allow you, Ms. Henderson, to prepare that order, submit it under a seven day notice of entry. And uh, after, again, after we've had some of that uh, counseling completed have recommendation then you can contact the court and we will uh, set the matter for 
an evidentiary hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, is the parenting time schedule provided grandma can supervise as provided in the judgment of divorce at this time? I have not changed that other than making it supervised. Thank you, Your Honor. She she will be able to uh, supervise all of it. Thank you. Okay. Court will end this matter at 9, 19 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do not have Christopher Jemarest. And that's uh, Sully's client. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. In case 2015-25DM, Tara Demarest versus Christopher Demarest. Today is Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 9.19 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Sullivan on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to hold plaintiff in contempt. Uh, Mr. Sullivan. Your Honor, a, a couple of things. <clears throat> First of all, the motion is laid out with particularity and proof uh, embedded in it. The motion speaks to several orders of the court that have been in place, many of which have been in place since the judgment was entered on August 6, 2015, and additional orders uh, which have been in place for some time are also referenced in the motion. The evidence presented, these are not just allegations, but evidence within the motion clearly indicate that the plaintiff has repeatedly violated the inalienable rights of uh, children provision, the joint legal custody provision, and the supplemental orders that were entered uh, in this case to the detriment of the minor children. The Michigan Child Custody Act is designed to promote a good and strong relationship between children and both parents. The inalienable rights provision supplemented by joint legal custody provisions clearly order that each parent is to promote the affection of the children with the other parent, not directly or indirectly influence the children to prejudice the child from the other parent, to promote the affectionate relationship between the children and the other parent. You know, Judge, these are legislative laws and court orders, orders that must be followed and repeatedly weren't to the detriment of the minor children. And for that reason, we are asking for the relief that we seek uh, in the relief portion of this motion. There are several points that we request. First, we are requesting immediate compliance with the orders of the court that have been in place for reasons that are in the best interest of the minor children. We're asking for the court to order immediate compliance and to indicate to the uh, plaintiff what sanctions will be applied if that doesn't occur. We're also asking the court to hold her in contempt for violation of court orders. We're asking for makeup parenting time, attorney fees, sanctions. We're asking that she undergo a psychological evaluation and provide the results of that to court and counsel and what other, other relief the court deems appropriate, award that to the defendant. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Wallover, what's, uh, what's your response? First off, um, I've hired Lisa McNiff and she is unable to join today. So we are asking for an adjournment. Okay, well, I wish you would have done that before Mr. Sullivan went through everything, but that's that's fine. What we're going to do is uh, in this uh, particular matter is obviously uh, Ms. Wilber does want counsel. What the court's going to do is the court is going to refer the matter to the referee for an evidentiary hearing on this uh, particular matter. Uh, that'll give Ms. McNiff time to uh, get into the case and to uh, be able to respond. Further, the uh, court will, however, note that the uh, orders that are in place will remain in place and are enforceable. And if a party violates those orders, they risk 
sanctions as far as court costs, uh, uh, jail time if uh, if appropriate in these uh, particular cases. So all I'll say to the plaintiff is make sure that you comply with the orders. If you don't, you do risk those particular sanctions. So what may, we'll do, may, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Just one additional point, Judge. The defendant's parenting time resumes on Wednesday after school, and we expect compliance with that. I, I've said that the orders that are in place will remain in place. If they're not complied with, then that is a basis for contempt action. And uh, so that's all I'll say to Ms. Wolliver. She'll have to speak to her attorney, uh, but the court expects that those orders in place will be complied with. So. Thank you, Your Honor. We will refer the matter to the referee and you'll get a, a hearing date uh, at that time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Court will end this matter at 924 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. You as well. Unmute. Unmute. Unmuted. Good morning. Good morning. Calling case 2022 582DN Bobby Smith versus Ryan Smith. Today is Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 927 a.m. Court will note the appearance of uh, Ms. Reed on behalf of the plaintiff. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion for occupational therapy. Ms. Reed, you can proceed. Thank you, Judge. Um, we did submit this motion recently to the court because the minor child, Bailey, who is nine years old, she's the youngest, uh, recently completed a multidisciplinary report for the Calhoun Intermediate School District. And throughout the course of that evaluation, um, Bailey displayed some emotional responses, some not only some educational deficiencies, but some emotional responses that um, had the counselor making a recommendation to mom, who was the parent who participated in the evaluation, that she should be in counseling. And along with that, Bailey's teacher, Miss Herman, has also begun to notice some behavior in Bailey that has required her to reach out to mom to say, hey, can you help with this? Bailey is being disruptive in class. She's acting out. She's running out of the room. She's yelling. She's whistling. She's acting disrespectfully. And so again, during that evaluation that was done by the district, um, Cody Wettlaufer, who is a school psychologist, recommended to mom that Bailey 
not only be an occupational therapy, but that she should be in counseling to work through some of these issues. And so we are asking your honor to grant our motion. Uh, Mom carries the child's insurance, um, is more than willing to facilitate setting her up with a counselor, and we would ask the court to order that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Uh, Smith, what's uh, what's your response to the motion? Uh, my response would be is um, being recommended through the school district. That is a perfectly fine thing to do. I'm not attest to it. Uh, I agree with um, she does have, she did have a moment in the classroom one day and uh, I don't feel as though she has those moments every day. It wasn't brought to my attention until this motion was filed. So I contacted the school to try to make sure that family one <clears throat> is also contacted when they feel as though there's an issue in the classroom. Um, yeah, I just think that, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we can work on and we'd like to try to make sure that she's taken care of. Okay, okay. Well, it seems to be, uh, again, a uh, thoughtful, reasoned uh, response. Uh, the court will order that uh, the Bailey would uh, participate in occupational therapy and any other counseling as recommended by the counselor, because I don't know what I don't know what the counselor possibly will recommend. But again, to uh, I guess you'd say to eliminate having to come back, the court will order that that counseling too should other counseling be recommended. Uh, Ms. Reed, you can prepare that order, submit it under seven day notice. I guess I'll ask at this point, I know we're, we're supposed to be in uh, later this week for a continuation of trial. Is this something that uh, we should have completed before we continue with trial, Ms. Reed? What's your thoughts? Judge, I don't, I don't think so. Um... You know, we've obviously been in, in front of your honor on this matter for over a year. Um, the majority of our witnesses have presented and uh, uh, at our last hearing, your honor had mentioned that our witness list was um, pretty well set. And so um, I, I think that my client would prefer to finish the trial, proceed with, you know, moving the the moving Bailey and Braxton's also enrolled in counseling, continue to move those processes forward, but uh, complete the trial this week. Okay. Mr. Brown, what's, what are your thoughts on that? Mr. Smith? I'm sorry. Yes, I was, go ahead. I was looking at something else. <laughs> no problem, sir. We completely uh, understand. Um, I would have to honestly say that maybe we should. Uh, wait until this is done. We still haven't received anything, any type of paperwork on uh, the evaluation of Braxton, which was done in December. Um, we haven't received any of that. Uh, so we don't know exactly the guidelines of what was done or questions that were asked, answers and all those good things. So I think maybe we should hold off and see, you know, what's exactly needed for Bailey. That way, going forward as a family, we can all be, we can both sides of us can be fully prepared for what we need and what's being expected of us through the counseling because it's not just for her it's also for us that's what the smile program taught us so um i think that would be my recommendation out your honor okay Judge, Go ahead, Ms. Reed. i guess what i would say is that you know we would still maintain that we prefer to complete the trial this week um, we believe that part of the reason that these children are having some of these reactions is due to the contentious nature of this case, and we'd like to get that put behind us so the family can begin to move forward. If your honor is inclined to adjourn the trial, I would ask that we be allowed then to modify our witness lists and our exhibit lists to include these counselors and their testimony recommendations and any reports that are completed uh, in order to really get an accurate picture of what these children are experiencing. Mr. Smith, do uh, you have any problem with at least uh, at this point, if we do adjourn, that we would simply add the counselors in as potential witnesses in this matter? I do believe that their report should be sufficient enough um, for the counselors 
as opposed to adding them as witnesses. The report should be sufficient enough to tell us what's going on and what's recommended. Your Honor. Well, and I understand, I understand that, but there may be sometimes you read those reports and there's a deficiency or clarification that you need. I don't want to foreclose uh, Ms. Reed from using that. Based upon what's uh, been stated, the court does believe it's appropriate and the court does state that I, based on what's been raised, that uh, it would be helpful to the court to have some understanding as to what those issues are affecting the children. And so the court at this point is going to adjourn the trial scheduled for later this week. Uh, but I will allow, uh, again, the counselors to submit those reports to the parties and to the court. And should either party desire to have the counselors testify that the court would allow those persons to be uh, joined as witnesses in this matter. Ms. Reed, uh, as a your motion, I'll ask that you would prepare the order, which would uh, reflect that. And uh, then we'll proceed as soon as we get something from the counselor, the recommendation. Uh, when we do get those recommendations or report, Ms. Reed, contact the court. And we will set this matter so that we can get it completed. Okay, Judge, I will do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, the court will conclude this matter at uh, 9.35 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Happy Monday. Do we have that order in the file? He, he, he's noticed up a order uh, revoking yeah. paternity. And okay, you'll have to send it to me because it's not in anything I have. Order, would you like to wait? It's 936. We have um Jerry Diaz and attorney on law. No, no, because Diaz is the yes. defendant. Yeah. Please connect to audio. Please unmute. Okay. Paul, does your client plan on appearing this morning? He does not. How about Jason Jackson? No. That I do not. Call he in told me. 2022-2792-DM, Ramon Guerrero versus Jerry Diaz, an intervening intervening party jason jackson today is monday march 20th 2023 at 9 37 a.m court will note the appearance of uh, mr umloff on behalf of the plaintiff uh mr umloff has submitted an order uh for revocation of paternity and to add party in this matter uh i guess i'll ask miss diaz do you have any opposition to that order um, yes, sir. I've tried since the last court to get Jason to go and do the DNA. And he told the children last night in the state of Michigan, I don't have no child. So I don't think he's planning on helping us out, sir, okay. at all. Well, what we're going to do is I understand that the court will sign the order. Uh, there is sufficient basis in the uh, motion and at that hearing to order that he comply with and submit to DNA testing. So the court will order that. And if he's not gonna participate or not willing, the court will address that at that time. But uh, at this particular point, the court will uh, proceed. Mr. Amloff, uh, has your client submitted? I, I don't recall the case. Has he submitted to uh, DNA testing? I don't believe he has, Your Honor. 
Why don't we do this, uh, Mr. Amaloff? The court will simply, uh, I'm going to change that, and I would add, I'd ask that you'd modify the order to state that the plaintiff and Mr. Jackson would submit, and uh, at least, obviously, for purposes of excluding your client, uh, I'll have that information available to us. So uh, if you would just change the order to make that addition, including uh, the uh, plaintiff as well, we'll be able to then uh, exclude him if he is, in fact, uh, determined not to have a probability of paternity. I will do that. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Court one, 